you know, law enforcement, it, it, with my review of the case, they have at least been communicating with each other to a point. So there is some consideration these cases are related. However, in my experience, law enforcement is typically ill prepared for this type of case. Law enforcement's expertise is working cases that they do all the time, such as gangbang homicides or domestic violence cases. But if they get the fantasy motivated serial predator, oftentimes even very experienced homicide investigators have never worked that type of case. And there are some subtleties that the offender may be leaving behind across multiple cases that are being missed. And so for law enforcement to come out and, and acknowledge that, okay, these cases are related, I think what you're going to see is, well, then they've made a DNA link or they've made some sort of high tech link in saying this is the same offender. So the, it was interesting when you said the victimology because that, you know, I was talking to, to Robin Speaks about Joanna. She mentioned what we had just discussed and that was the, um, the vulnerable population. Do they, do police often keep these details to themselves and not even share amongst police? Meaning, if they find something odd, some sort of a signature um, when they discover these bodies, either whether it is through um, inexperience or whether they're guarded in trying to keep their cases to themselves, is there any kind of politics that play in in terms of trying to get that sharing information together? You know, th there's always politics. Uh, and, you know, in this day and age, you hope that across jurisdictions, you know, politics don't come into play, but they do. Uh, but uh, it's also they're looking at their cases individually, the cases that are within their jurisdiction. And there may be details that are significant to that case that only the killer would know. And if they are lacking that identifying DNA evidence or other evidence, um, they need to withhold that evidence. And what I've seen is, is that typically law enforcement will withhold that evidence from other investigating agencies out of fear that there will be a leak, especially if the media starts gravitating and starts focusing in on the case. And this could hamper the investigation. You know, if they are seeing some unusual behaviors, that would be a signature, a behavioral signature that let's say a profiler would go, yes, you are dealing with a fantasy motivated offender. And they're keeping that away from other agencies where they could establish a link, then that would hamper the investigation. That's where there has to be trust between these agencies in order to be able to share that information. But mind you, they possibly can't go public with that information because they need it in order to prove the case. Now, that makes perfect sense. Although I, I uh, my anxiety starts peaking when I think about a certain tool that might have been used that they want to keep for the prosecution because it's you know something only the killer will know. And in doing so, in keeping that, uh, that information doesn't get out, and he gets to kill again. So I'm always you know mindful that sharing can stop a predator, but it can also stop um, a prosecution. So that's got to be a really bad devil's bargain. Let me ask you with the FBI, when and how might they become involved? Does one of these agencies need to reach out? Does the FBI sort of need to, you know, take a sniff and see the national news and say, look at that, I think we need to maybe, you know, take take a trip. How does it work? No, you know, the FBI right now with the cases, the way I understand them, the FBI does not have jurisdiction. So this would require the local agencies asking the, the FBI for assistance. And the FBI can come in with resources. They can provide agents, they can provide technology, they can provide uh, financial uh, resources in order to help the investigation. But the local agencies, by and large, are going to be running the investigation. Um, in this type of case, where you have potentially a series, you, you know, from my uh, vantage point, I think the best FBI resource that needs to be consulted are behavioral analysts and individuals like myself who have experience with crime scene reconstruction and behavioral analysis 
to look at all six of these cases and see, are there those subtle indicators that would indicate you've got a singular offender at work? Because again, generally the local agencies do not have the expertise in evaluating the crime scenes, the physical evidence, the violence done to these victims to notice predatory behavior. I could talk to you for hours. I have 10 seconds left though, but I've got to ask you, when I introduce you, as I always do, Paul Holes, I say he's a retired cold case investigator with the Contra Costa Sheriff's Office. Would you unretire for something like this? I would absolutely work this type of case and I am continuing to consult with law enforcement across the nation on similar cases. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, so we will call you back. Um, Paul Holes, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.